Okay, shalom, love, and blessings, Yahites, family of Yah. Now, impromptu, but very relevant. And this has been prompted by dealings I've been having, having in, you know, ministering to people. Okay, uh, very recently. And we're talking about liars, lies, lying, and their end. What you are revealed to me. So this is going to go by way of a testimony. And a happening that happened 20 years ago with regards to a dealing with a church sister. And I was fairly, I was young in the Lord, I'll say. And when I say young in the Lord, it was 10 years. I was 10 years old in the faith. And let me, um, first of all, share this site. If any of you, if anybody has, before I even go into this, before I even go into this testimony, let me um, share with you the website, yahites.org. That's Y-A-H-I-T-E-S dot O-R-G. And you can email me at yahites.org at gmail.com or you can leave comments below. Okay. And if there's anything on any of the channels, the Biblical Marriage Channel, the Apostles Doctrine Channel, or even on this channel, which is, this channel is more of a, um, with, uh, more of a general commentary, discussion type channel. You are free to come on at any time, come into the comments, or even request a dialogue. Because I don't do the debates. We're, we're actually commanded in the scriptures not to debate. So you can get in touch with, regarding anything that I say, regarding any of the doctrines on any of the sites, the channels, or on the website itself. Liars. Let's get a nice... Let's do it. All right, my multitasking isn't the best, so bear with me. Okay. Right. So, liars, lies, lying, and their end. What Yah revealed to me. As I said, this is going to be a testimony. And this happened by way of someone that me and my household, we know very well. And as I say, I was young in the faith, 10 years old. And let me tell you this, 10 years old is young in the faith with regards to the life that we live and the depths that we can uh, attain in terms of walking with Yah. Now, this person was known to us, very close, and was in the church, is in the church. And I'm going to take you from then to now. Now, when I say I was young in the faith, I had naiveties in thinking that once you're saved, you know, um, you receive the Holy Spirit, you've come to Christ, you've repented of your sins and you're walking in holiness, you know the truth about eternal life, the hope of the resurrection of the dead. Um, you know, we, we know about the lake of fire, we know about hell, Gehenna, etc. So I, I foolishly thought that, you know, especially for elders, that elders held a certain standard, 
having lived life to a certain standard. You know, I'm looking at them as I look at myself. So what actually happened was this person, for whatever, well, I know part of the reason why they do not like me. And it may sound silly about what I'm about to say. For you, it might be something different. But this person has a particular issue with me. I do think it's spiritual, above all things. I do think it's spiritual. But because um, I am mixed, half Jamaican, half African, they are fully Jamaican, and they do not like me initially because I am half African. And so this had been going on for a few years. Now, there was a dispute, and I'm the, the one to usually try and make the peace. You know, you know, I'll do what I can. So I invited the person round to my home, where my family home, to come. And this is an elder in the church. I invited the person round to my home and to have a sit down and to have a talk to get down to the bottom of what is going on and to resolve, to, to, to move past in peace. I was there, my Isha was there, this person brought their son. Their son is unsaved and also a procreative deviant. If you don't understand what procreative deviant means, it's somebody who um, does not live or abide by the natural order of procreation. Now, and because I'm on YouTube and because it's going out on a podcast, I'm not going to say what I usually say because the video will get flagged, the podcast will get flagged, taken down, warning, all that type of stuff. Okay, so all four of us are there in our living room, in our lounge. And, you know, I'd start off and I say, okay, you know, let the person speak first, have their peace, what, what is their issue, etc. And, but, well, I'd stated, this is the reason why we're here and let the person start to speak. That person, a church, mature person in the faith, who would by that time been in Christ for, I would say, at least 25 years. 25 years. Okay. Sat in my living room on my seat and proceeded to lie. Lie with such convincing. I, I don't I was baffled. I'm I'm watching and looking at this person, and this person is lying, and I am confused. I'm genuinely and utterly confused because I'm looking at this person and I'm thinking. But you are at church, you're saying you're going in the spirit, you're speaking in tongues, you're praying, you are doing all of this stuff. And yet you come and you can lie so easily. Now, I was confused because the lies that this person was saying was obviously meant to agitate and entice their son to get aggravated and get violent. Uh, so I'm not going to go into what, what actually transpired after that. But all the while this person was talking, I'm listening. And when they finished talking, I said, you're a liar. 
and I broke down their lies. Everything that you just said is a liar. I looked at their son and I said, your parent is a liar, a bare-faced liar. So I'm not going to go in to what, what was uh, what said afterwards, what happened afterwards. But I prayed afterwards because I was in shock. My Isha was in shock, but not as much as I was. Now, I prayed and I said, Father, what is going on? How is it that this person is able to lie with such freedom, such um, strength, such uh, confidence? And the Holy Spirit took me to this particular scripture, and I'm going to read it out to you. And this is in Revelation 21. Uh, this is back in, as I say, this is 20 years ago, 2004, around. It was around 2004. And in Revelation 21, 6 to, to 8, it says this, And he said unto me, It is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. I will give unto him that is a thirst of the fountain of the water of life freely. He that overcomes shall inherit all things, and I will be his God, and he shall be my son. But the fearful and unbelieving and the abominable and murderers and whoremongers and sorcerers and idolaters and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burns with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. So, as I said, the Holy Spirit told me, read. So I went to my physical paper Bible, and I'm reading this. And then I heard the Holy Spirit, read. And the Holy Spirit started to break down liars and the condition of liars and what their end will be. But also the, the way for liars to overcome. Amen. And the clue and the, the seal is in, or the revelation is in chapter, is in chapter 21, it's in verse 8. And this is to do with the second death, the lake which burns with fire, the lake of fire, the eternal death. It says, but the fearful, and the, the Holy Spirit started to explain, those who are fearful can receive him, can receive the spirit of God. And no longer be fearful. The unbelieving can believe, can come to faith. The abominable can be cleaned. Murderers can be forgiven. Whoremongers can be made righteous. Sorcerers can turn to righteousness. Idolaters can turn to worship the one and only true God. And but liars are a different kettle of fish. Each and every type of person written in this verse does not have the word all because they have the capacity to change because all of the stuff that they are doing um, is able to be turned away from very easily. But yet, liars says all liars. It does not discount one. And just to show you this, to be a fact, we will go to a, a more clear, a, trans, a, a version. 
here that will where I'll be able to show you. You see here. But the fearful, the unbelieving, abominable, murderers, whoremongers, sorcerers, idolaters, and all liars. You see the word all is literally all. And if you can see at the top of the screen, at the top of, well, let's, if you see at the side here, let me see if I can zoom in for you. All, all, everything, one, whole, always, all, in the singular, the whole, entire, every. So this is not talking a partial, this is not, this is completely different to the fearful, the unbelieving, because their states will change. And I was shocked because I went in after the, the Holy Spirit told me to read. And I asked, why all? Why all? The Holy Spirit said, because lying is a condition of the heart. Lying is a condition of the heart. I was blown away. And I was, when I say fearful, now I prayed. I prayed for the person. I, you know, I was, I was still trying for many, many years after trying to make things right with this person in terms of trying to make peace with this person, trying, I uh, compromised um, in so many ways, not the standards of God, but in my own standards, you know, uh, I made sure I humbled myself and to see if I could bring peace. And up to this day, it has not manifested. The thing is that as it comes to this day, this spiritual condition of this person has grown worse and worse and worse. It has affected their life and it has affected their relationships. And yet this person is seen to be very godly in the church realm and their situations in life are as usual put down to the devil the lion is very serious i interacted with a person over this weekend who lied with no no qualms and as a standard i also been communicating with people who what i mean lie so quickly and i'm like yeah what is going on and you just showed me the condition of the church and believers who deceive themselves believing that a little white lie doesn't mean that much. I can twist this word, I can do this, I can change this, and that it's going to be okay. But yet they don't repent. They don't, um, they don't look to think that, you know what? That wasn't good, I'm not gonna do that again. Because it's a condition of the heart because out of the abundance of the heart the mouth speaks and the cure and i'll say this to everybody is the word of god is the spirit of god the spirit of christ the scripture tells us that Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against you. And I will say to you, if you have had a problem with lying, 
because some people feel that they have to lie in certain situations. I implore you, hide the word of God in your heart. Repent, acknowledge that you have a problem with telling the truth, whether you get frightened or whatever it is, or you feel compelled or it just rolls off the tongue. Repent, cry out to God. Ask him to fill you with his Holy Spirit. Start hiding his word in your heart so that you will no longer sin against him. And start to consume less of mainstream media, because mainstream media is a propaganda machine based on lies, based on deception. Start to consume less movies, because Hollywood, Bollywood, Nollywood, all of these movie houses are part of the kingdom of darkness. And they are designed and set up, orchestrated to propel, propagate and establish lies. Stay out of politics because that's where the rulers of the darkness of this world have their authority. And in all things, speak truth or speak not at all, because it is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. All liars, doesn't matter what type of lie, all liars. And I pray if there's been any for, whether it's you, me, or anyone else, whether you have altered the truth or Yah by his, and I include myself because I'm, I'm not going to, um, I am not holier than thou, if that makes sense. Amen. Um, I pray to everyone listening, everyone who gets to listen to this. Gets a visitation from the Lord from the Most High Yah to cleanse your heart, clean your hands, your mouth, your heart. Don't be double-minded. Start to tell the truth. Stop lies, deceit. Speak truth or speak not at all. I pray that he reveals his truth and exposes and reveals to you where you have gone wrong, where any of us have gone wrong, so that our ways will be cleansed and we do not find ourselves in verse 8 of chapter 21 of the book of Revelation. This is a serious thing, beloved, because I'm not talking about something that, I'm not talking about a situation, you know, as I give you the testimony there, I'm not talking about a situation that just happened. This is 20 years in the making and the state of that person has just become more and more decrepit, even as their status, their status in the church has been solidified, secured and held in high esteem. Be aware, beloved. Be vigilant. Because the enemy is a roaring lion, roams around seeking whom he can devour. Be holy. Because Yah is holy. Shalom, love and blessings. I hope that um, has ministered something or has been a blessing or made you think about your life. It's not, there's nothing on this earth, in this earth, that is actually worth lying about. There's nothing. There is nothing. Nothing. So there's nothing that on this earth that is worth 
ending up here? Nothing. So, have a change of heart, and I pray that the fear of God enters your heart and your mind and fills you to overflowing with the love of God that you don't ever utter, write, or partake in a single false or deceptive word. Shalom, love, and blessings in Messiah.